Hi, my name is Michael Trout here in Japan, and I want to do a quick talk on systemic pesticides. You've probably been hearing all the fuss about these pesticides affecting bees, and it's something that I've been talking about for years now. And the reason why I came to the conclusion it was pretty simple because EPA has over 60 years of data on the decline of bees. That's right, bees have been declining since the introduction of pesticides in the 1940s and 50s. They started actually declining in the 1950s, um, which in many respects you could think is, is the early adaption of pesticides. Now, in the 1990s, something called systemic pesticides were invented. And I hear a bee or something flying around my head here. Um, and systemic pesticides are not like the pesticides prior to 1990. Is that they were what's known as um, pesticides that were not water soluble. The new pesticides, known as systemic pesticides, basically are water soluble. They're non biodegradable. So once you put them into plants or into the environment, they're there. Um, parts of them do decompose, but there are elements of it that do not, right? So they're not biodegradable. And ultimately, they go inside the plant. Now what you don't know is this, is that research has shown that up to 80% of these systemic pesticides and herbicides, and Roundup, for example, is one of them, Roundup is, is one of them, is absorbed into the new growth and fruit. Now Roundup, Monsanto won't tell you why, for example, their Roundup alfalfa is is not to be sold to consumers at the um, sprout, right, at sprouts, because, see, sprouts are pretty much all pesticide. If 80% of Roundup is being absorbed into the new growth, remember, absorbed into the new growth and fruit of a plant, then if you're eating alfalfa sprouts, what you're eating is just pure Roundup. And that's the reason, and now they don't tell you this, but this is the reason why it is illegal for farmers to sell sprouts. Now what's going to happen is some farmer is going to do it and some kids or someone's going to get really sick because there's no law stopping them from doing it. It's just an agreement part of their contractual agreement. They could get sued by Monsanto but they you know but that's it and there's no warning to the fact that the sprouts are harmful. The other thing is that this these systemic pesticides basically are being sprayed on your barley, on the wheat that's made your beer and everything else. So we're getting them from many different, you know, food groups, whether it's our beers, whether it's our wines, whether it's our regular food, and they're building up in our system. And what's happened to the bees, and this is what I've been saying, is basically all these these agrochemicals have been getting into the water. And I've got a video on bees talking about why water is so important. Um, and it's poisoning the bees or weakening their offspring and over time they're just they're being susceptible to mites and everything else. The whole mite problem only came out in the late 1980s and probably because we have weakened the bees immune system so much with these chemicals that they've been unable to fight these problems. Now wild bees such as the Japanese won't have this problem. So systemic pesticides or all these neonicotines and all these other ones that are produced by bear and Monsanto are harming our environment. They're getting in our food. And you need to be aware of that. So that's why I launched the Stop Pesticides movement on, on Facebook. So Stop Pesticides, you can join the group. I'm encouraging people to set up, you know, Japan Stop Pesticides, uh, Fukui Stop Pesticides, New York Stop Pesticides, whatever. You know, we need to stop pesticides in every area, in every region of the world. And Unfortunately, unless we do this, there's no hope for the bees. It's that simple.